Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will a British bloke get lost in translation? Magic pork chops. Things you're going to win tonight. When we spend five days... The race is on. With five foodies... <laughs> competing in a culinary throwdown. That is nice. Wow. Full of themes and schemes. Could get a little dirty tonight. I hate bread right now. Not well, obviously because I'm the best. In a fight to the finish... Gloves are off. Round two. For a thousand dollar cash prize... <laughs> and bragging rights as host with the most. Yes. I'm gonna win. Yeah, baby. We're in Burlington for the first day of the competition. And in the hot seat is 54-year-old Steve Lydon, who's a sucker for soccer. That is my passion is soccer. I don't call it soccer, though. We call it football. Very important. Grow up. I don't act my age. Clearly. Monkey man. Are you blotto? Cheers. I'll take that as a yes. I'm drunk on, a, on the odd occasion, on a Saturday night or a Friday night or a Thursday night. <laughs> Thursday is the new Friday. If I don't win this week, I better make sure I at least drink $1,000 worth of booze. Says the host of Tomorrow Night, 34-year-old nurse Kelly Rossignol. Nursing is great! <laughs> really? It pays the bills. So there's more to Kelly than cleaning bedpans. I've lived several past lives, mostly in the Southern Hemisphere as a beautiful brunette with olive skin. Serenity now. <laughs> Careful, Chuckles, because you're the one serving shrimp cocktail on a bed of iceberg lettuce to four strangers. Iceberg actually rots in your stomach. Even if it's smothered in homemade cocktail sauce? How homemade can a cocktail sauce get? Well, it has scratch-made mayo, right, Steve? Can I lie? Sure. Yeah, I made it from scratch. No, I didn't. So really, it's just combining ingredients, like ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, and citrus. I'm just going to squeeze half a lemon. Steve adds salt, pepper, mixes, and tastes. How is it? Gosh, that's quite nice. <laughs> but there's one more ingredient that I insist you put in. And that's? Brandy. Just a little dab will do ya. Simple, but nice, and people will think you spent hours making it. Way to slack. I can't stand it when people slack off. Meet the host of Night 3, 26-year-old Kate Park, an overachiever who doesn't like to run with a boring crowd. My biggest hope is that there's not going to be a bunch of picky eaters in the groove. I can't stand the meat and potatoes kind of, I won't try anything. Ew, that's gross. I've never eaten that before. Wonder how she feels about people who don't follow recipes for their poaching liquids. There's no exact science. It's just uh, whatever more you put in, the more strength of flavor you're going to get. Not super impressed. What's the worst that can happen? You mean besides overcooking the shrimp? My shrimp won't overcook. I'm going to keep an eye on them. Don't worry about that. I mean, nothing gets a party kicking without a few jumbo shrimp to start. Especially when it's followed by stuffed pork chops with Swiss potato and vegetable gratin. It kind of reminds me of something that my grandmother might have put together. <laughs> but Betcha Grams never got on the Twitter and tweeted about it at hashtag CDWMC. This isn't a winning menu. But then you haven't seen Steve-O cutting up the veg for his gratin. Excellent knife skills. People have called me Japanese. I'm so good at it. Sure, Samurai Steve, whatever you say. Voila. Looking good. People might look at me and think, you know, she's a dumb blonde. She doesn't really know what's going on. That's the host of The Final Night, 39-year-old Lisa Verban, a hot housewife who plans to dust the competition. My day generally consists of waking up in the morning, making the bed, of course, uh, making breakfast for my husband and myself. And once he takes off to work, I continue tidying the house. How fulfilling. Just not my thing. Then let's hope the gratin will be. I think it's kind of like scallop potatoes. Wrong. Anyone who thinks these are scallop potatoes, as opposed to Swiss vegetable potatoes, doesn't know their ass from their elbow. Steve adds butter and Swiss cheese. And in we go with the cheese. Parmesan, half a cup of cream, chives, and mixes. That smells good. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping. Steve layers the potato mixture, sautés veg, layer, layer, and tops with the rest of the potatoes. Have you ever seen a dish look quite so lovely? Pleading the fifth. That's good and easy. And it also gives Steve time to head to the butcher to get the pork. Morning, Mike. Good morning. How, How can I help you today? I'm looking for some nice pork chops, and I'm doing a dinner party, and I'm going to stuff them. The guests are the chops. It's going to be a long, painful week. Got some nice rib end chops here, bone in. Perfect for stuffing. Perfect. They'll do. Five of them. 
maybe make that four. I think it's boring. Pot Meat Kettle, otherwise known as Boring Brad Cozy, the host of Night 4, who spends a lot of his free time with his best friends. I play with little army man, little tanks, that kind of thing. Geek. I'm a geek and I'm proud of it. That's crazy. I don't do anything crazy. Luckily, Brad's the only stale thing around. Fresh bread, wheat and gluten free. Ugh, Steve's one of those. Some people think wheat and gluten free dishes don't taste as good. They're wrong. I think they taste better and they're better for you. Have another beer, Steve. That's gluten. Shh, we don't talk about that. Steve stuffs his pork chops. Magic pork chops. Steve, you're gonna win tonight. And puts them aside so he can move on to his dessert, Banoffee Pie. Bonafee. It's Banoffee. Banoffee Pie. <laughs> it looks like Banff, which is where I used to live, but I don't anymore. So what is Banoffee Pie? Is it a mountainish pie? Not even close. Everybody in this competition should know what Banoffee Pie is. Enlighten us. I have no idea what it is. It's a banana and toffee pie. It's nothing special. No, but it is British and starts with crushed graham crackers. I'm using the gluten-free graham crackers. Along with sugar, nutmeg, and melted butter. Everything tastes way better with butter. It's a winner. Sure, if you want to make the thickest crust ever. Steve tosses the crust into the oven to bake while he makes his whipped cream. And then it's time for the offy component. Uh, maybe coffee? Wrong again. It's toffee, as in a boiled can of condensed milk. This is actually perfect. Steve spreads the toffee over the crust, making sure to get... Through all the corners. Add sliced banana and tops with whipped cream. And one last touch... I'm hoping for chocolate. You're in luck. Steve grates chocolate on top and voila! And my friend is decadent banoffee pie. Big whoop. That money's coming home with me. My motto is look cute, be evil. <laughs> Bring on the iceberg lettuce! Coming up on Come Dine With Me, three blondes Woo. are better than one. Yeah! It's the first night of a five-day food feud, and brash Brit Steve has high hopes for tonight. I hope four crazy people do turn up. I'm looking for a fun night. And what could be more fun than blonde bombshell Lisa? Hi, I'm Hi. Steve. How are I'm you? I'm Lisa. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you, Lisa. And the ladies? He actually did not talk about the ladies at all. Well, not to your face. Lovely ooters. There's more where that came from, because Nurse Kelly's making a house call. Hi. Hi. Nice I'm to Kelly. Meet you. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Come in. Is this for you? Thank you for the lovely massage oils. I often bring random sex gifts to people I don't know. Good to know. Kelly is an interesting person. Kelly brought me melting massage oil. Wow. So you're one of those, eh? Perhaps. Stop playing coy. <laughs> I do insist whatever gifts are brought me, that person who brought them has to oh boy. share it with me. Who knew? Everyone but what's her face? I don't know what her name is. Anna? What's her name? Who? The blonde, the blonde with the fake boobs. Who's her, what's her name? I don't know. <laughs> what's her name? Lisa, who's not to be confused with next guest, Cutesy Kate. Hello. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Kate. Nice to meet you, Kate. Nice Come to in. meet you. Indeed. Steve is a charmer. Whose favorite flavor just happens to be blonde. Get yourselves acquainted, I'll be right back. Wow. Well, we're a trio. Woo! Three-way blonde power. Aww. And all the light bulbs are already screwed in. Not only is it great there's three women, but they seem to be getting slightly younger. And drunker. What is this exactly? Kia Royale. Kia Royale? Oh, yeah. that's um, cassis and champagne, right? Yes. 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 Brown noser. I love winning. It wasn't a contest. Cheers. Cheers. Here's, Cheers. To a, here's to a fun week, although well, we have one more, I believe. You sure do. And unfortunately, it's Mr. Monotone Brad. How you doing? I'm Steve. Brad, nice, nice to, to meet you. you, Brad. Isn't this exciting? I wasn't overly excited. Give it a minute. And this is I'm Kate. 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 Brad, Brad. Nice to meet you. Lisa. Brad. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, Brad too. and Kelly. Kelly. Hi, nice, nice to, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Like really nice. They're all hot as far as I'm concerned. Steve too? Steve. What about Steve? Oh, he's just strategizing. I'll just take my pick. And Brad can have what's left. Yeah. Which won't yeah. be many. If any. You're just lucky you have an accent. Later on through the night, 
as the drink flows. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to understand me, so. Is it cockney? If I, uns if I insult you, you ain't, you ain't gonna know. <laughs> Great. It's perfect. It's fun. It's perfect. That is usually what happens to me, too. <laughs> I don't have an accent. First really? impressions, Kelly's a problem. Yeah. Kelly's a problem. I am a little bit scared of her. <laughs> They're all fun. They all like a drink. I can tell that already. And not too sad to look at. A little bit of eye candy. Makes up for them being nosy. <gasps> well. Are those? What? Cigars? Yes. Hopping <laughs> on a stogie. Oh my god, look, he keeps all the tips. Oh, why? Not to shove up his nose. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a hot look. Oh, that is not a hot look. Kelly was thoughtful enough to stick the cigar butts up her nose and then shoot the booger ends at my feet. Loosen up. What's that a shot of? Oh god, it looks oh, like swamp god. water. Shoot it, Kate. Oh my god, that shot. That shot was so gross. Kelly doesn't seem to mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you enjoy that? <laughs> we actually <Was> did. <laughs> Whatever strums your chord. Woo! Yeah! This is kind of like a Def Leppard thing, don't you think? It's a little more dolly. It's a kid hide them. I could wear a turtleneck, but then everybody would think I was fat. And not smart enough to know how to open a door. Good job. Okay, cut that. Keep going. With Steve plating iceberg lettuce, and the not-so-jumbo, jumbo shrimp. At the end of the day, this is an appetizer. This isn't the main meal. Steve grabs his ketchup concoction. And then drizzle it over. Hate to break it to you, but that's not a drizzle. I hope my presentation is fantastic. It's not, but nothing you can do about that, so serve away. OK, guys, here's the appetizer. Act impressed. Definitely not the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Enjoy. Your cocktail sauce with a side of shrimpy shrimp. The jumbo prawn is a huge prawn. Like, it's big. And these prawns were little little bitty lid prawns. How did you make the cocktail sauce? It's mayonnaise, ketchup. Fancy. You would never catch me using ketchup. If ever I go to a restaurant and I order the jumbo shrimp, mm -hmm. I actually order a side of mayo. And this is better than just ordering a side of mayo. So congratulations. Good job. Okay. I found the shrimp uh, quite tasty. But? Boo on the iceberg lettuce. I loved it. Then why don't you marry it? I've been uh, happily married for 18 years. Good man. Good so. for you. Let's all be condescending and clap. <laughs> Put up that for 18 years? Are you going to use a clap? <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm in a relationship. And? Is it a good one? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's pretty good. So it's a he then, Kelly? Sometimes. You swing both ways, then. What woman doesn't? I have been married for three years to a six foot seven, 250 pound monster. Okay, well, Kate, it is then. <laughs> yeah, Kate, it is. <laughs> That's right. Steve is a huge flirt. I think he loves flirting with women. Right. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, it's all fun and games till... Oh, there you Thank go. Thank God you're the first to do that Opa. and not me. It's the first night in a fight for a $1,000 prize, and Jack the Lad Steve is overconfident. Oh, I can't see anything going bad tonight now, uh, unless, I, unless I burn the main meal. Or forget something. I'm just going to boil the water because I forgot to do the green beans. And childproof the table. I was. Oh! oh. There you Thank go. Thank God you're the first to do that Opa. and not me. Spilling your water only means let's get this party going. <laughs> Tone it down. Take it easy. Uh, who invited Dad? What's the craziest thing your parents have ever caught you doing? Well, I'll go ahead and answer that first. <laughs> <laughs> that girl. I kind of thought that. Let's go. <laughs> When mom sees a lot of older boys in the house on a morning after a party, one would say, What are you running a poor house? Oh my god. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Snorting? Sorry. Don't be. My mom and dad never really caught me doing anything. That figures. Kate is more of a goody two shoes. Kate is a little bit persnickety. The exact opposite of Steve with his plating. There we are. Ready to serve. Stuffed pork chops, coming soon to a table near you. Time for the main course. Woohoo! The presentation looked average at best. Yuck. I don't want to put that in my mouth. That's what they all say. Just eat it. 
If you think Steve's British fare is more than fair, then head to WNetwork.com for all of his recipes, including the stuffing. The stuffing really added a lot to the pork chop as far as I was Good. concerned. Wow, Brad actually gave Steve a compliment. I didn't necessarily compliment the pork chops. I didn't think the pork chops were that great. Aw, uh, get stuffed. I've got to ask, though, what was stuffed in the pork chop? Cranberries, chicken stock, bacon, uh, wheat and gluten-free cornbread. How trendy. Aw, <laughs> uh, gluten-free. <laughs> Why is everybody into this whole gluten-free crap? Gluten-free, big deal. Says the woman having a food gasm over the cranberries. I think that it adds a little element that's like, oh, hi, here I am, I'm a cranberry. Take the wine away, she's impersonating cranberries. <laughs> Kelly, you're not supposed to be drunk yet. Too late. Let's get it going, let's bring it on. You heard the lady. This will be uh, number seven. Bound to make things interesting. I'm the most interesting bunch of all of you. Of course. Because I'm a domestic engineer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Translation. You're a housewife. <laughs> I do the gym. I do chores. I make sure that my husband has his uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner ready for him. Honey, I'm home. Let's go through the checklist. Have you done the upstairs, downstairs, four bathrooms? <laughs> Don't pick on Lisa. She's got ambitions. I would love to be a horse tamer. Bless. Lisa just has a great heart. Oh, so that's what you've been staring at. If you were a circus performer, which one would you be? I think I'd be a magician. Ah. Uh... Yes, I like the idea of illusion and eyeing people. Boring. It was a little lame. I would go with a lion tamer. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I think that would have to be more like a kitten rather than a lion. Meow. I'd be a contortionist. <laughs> Giddy up. Are you bendy? Guilty as charged. Good food is my guilty pleasure, for sure. Oops. Sorry about tonight. I... <laughs> Steve, those are words from your mouth, not from my mouth. Good one, Brad. Brad, I kept calling him Derek, and I felt like his name should be Derek, but it's not as Brad. Right. You're right. Yes. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will the Banoffee be offy? <laughs> wow. It's the first night in a fight for the title of host with the most. And Steve thinks he can keepy uppy. Time for the decadent Banoffee pie, baby. Homemade from scratch. Uh, you didn't make the graham crackers. The crust on this one looks incredible, so I'm just very, very happy with it. But will the Canadians be chuffed with the best o' Britain? Here's the final chapter of the evening, the dessert, some people's favourite. This is decadent banoffee pie, gluten-free crust. Enjoy. Get off the gluten train already. And get shoveling pie in your face. Dessert was pretty dang good. Overall, delicious, delicious, especially with that caramel. Good. Can, can I go home with a cup of it? Really? It's that good? Steven, I must know. Is this a homemade caramel sauce? Yep. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's delicious. It's so good. Oh my god, it's so good. Moreish, even? I definitely love the caramel and the bananas and the whipped cream. Um, the crust is definitely a bit of a, an exercise in, in precision to cut through. Understatement. <laughs> I needed like a uh, jackhammer to cut through the crust. The crust, in, in my opinion, is part of the key to it. Not in everyone else's. The texture was just way off. My one suggestion would be to make the crust half as thick as you did. Bite your tongue, Stephen. Very good point. I'll take it all in that. Yeah, but you made it all. It was all from scratch. All from scratch, yeah. Someone's telling lies. Or should I say, porky pies. I'm going to give you a Cockney rhyme and slang, and you've got to tell me what it means in Canadian English. Ooh, that's tough. I'm not afraid at all. You should be. I'll give you an example. Boat race. Ice. So let's see who's got the biggest cobbler's alls. Pen and ink. Think. Wrong. Think. 
right over my head. It's not that hard, people. Drink? Close. I don't want to be British. <laughs> Too bad. I didn't think means you would stink. Next question. Plates of meat are? Feet. Correct. One point for Brad. Yes. I thought it was fun. Lisa, Rosie Lee. G? Come on. I was learning along the way. Kelly, Rosie Lee. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's T. Wow. Lisa, Ruby Murray. Murray. No. It's not a repeating game. It's so bad. I'm so bad. Agreed. It's not hard. Just break it down. <laughs> Come on. Lisa, Trouble and Strife. Nice. No. Kelly, Trouble and Strife. I ain't take no kite. No. Someone's elephant trunk. Or should I say... Drunk. Yeah! yeah. She can. Winning's a lot of fun. And it's exactly what Steve's hoping to do. So I'd give myself a solid eight. And if I can get four of them, I'm a happy camper. Steve's a really fun guy, but his food was average, so I'm giving him a seven. Slur much? Blondes have more fun, but they also give seven. The food was a little pedestrian, so I'm giving Steve a seven. A seven? Seventy percent above average. So Steve kicks off the week with 28 points and breathes a huge sigh of relief. Right on. The next four nights are going to be mental, and I'm going to have it, because I ain't got to behave anymore. Cheerio, pip pip. Thanks, governor. <laughs> I will definitely kick. Everybody sucks. Geeks rule, for sure. Tomorrow's my night, and I'm going to be bang on, bang on. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me, will the party girl... It's a big hunk of delicious smelling meat. Fill their bellies. So that's what it feels like to be pregnant. And win the dough. Anybody doesn't like it, they can suck it. As Kelly shoots for the stars. I got Shooter! You. And the claws come out. I think we've got some discount plates going uh, on here. Yeah. Uh oh, we have a problem. Let it begin. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will a nutty nurse. Let me get started. Not impressed. Get pulses racing? An orgasm a day keeps the doctor away. You know, why stop at one? Oh my god. Look at me. I'm a 10. It's the second day in the competition, and we're in Burlington, where we find Kelly, an RN who's had more than her fair share of emergencies in the kitchen. What? <laughs> Is that a scorch mark? I always take things out with tea towels, and I go in, I'm looking at something, and I turn around and do this. My towel might have been on fire. Oh, Kel. This is me at my best. Far out. Aliens guided the Egyptians to make the pyramids. Anything else? I believe in ghosts, too. And vampires? I'm afraid of vampires. Isn't everyone? That's cutesy Kate, a dietitian who thinks everyone's bound to fall in love with her after she hosts tomorrow night. I'm too cute to hate. How blonde. There's no dumb bonds in this competition. No, but there is one really big egghead, and that's Beige Brad, who spends his days painting miniatures. How exciting. I'm excited. That's it? Yes, I'm excited as I can get. Geek. He's a great geek. Says hot housewife Lisa, who plans on cleaning up when she hosts on the fifth and final night. We're definitely saving the best for last, hands down. Lots of bitch. And so is Steve, because as soon as his party ended, he became all demanding. Not kind of want me thousand dollars. <laughs> to replace all the wine they drank and spilled last night. I was... oh! This will be uh, number seven. Which, coincidentally, is what Steve scored across the board, landing him with a score of 28 points. They're going to have to bring it pretty good to beat what happened last night. And feeling their best. I got a bit wasted last night. Better pump yourself up, then. Time to get started. Cooking with a hangover is never a good idea. Well, luckily, there's no cooking in Kelly's appetizer. No siree, because she's serving a salad. Or, to be more specific... Greens with beets, carrots, mandarin oranges... Scallions, red peppers, strawberries, feta cheese, and toasted walnuts. It's just really store-bought, chopping up with a dressing. Well, that's not all. She's also got to assemble it. Last time I checked, this was a cooking competition, not an assembly competition. 
nerd. This is definitely an easy salad to throw together if you're hungover. Looking good. These are ready to go for now. I always love a good salad. I will probably eat the whole thing. Oh, a whole salad with dressing? I'm assuming it's French dressing with orange and cream in it. <laughs> Not exactly. You need mayonnaise and you need frozen orange juice concentrate. Gross. This is pretty basic. This is, this is basic. This is, yeah, basic stuff. Cause basically, Brad. Just gotta mix it up. Get rid of all the mayonnaise chunks. Don't say chunks. That's always kind of gross. Perfect. Homemade dressing done. I'm making homemade bread, right from scratch, just like Mummy used to do. I just don't see her as a, a bread-baking girl. Just you watch. She starts with warm water. I don't measure with precision or eye level or any of that stuff. I just kind of guesstimate. Adds yeast. Let it rain yeast particles. Whisks, attaches it to the stand, mixes, and sifts in exactly five cups of flour. How many cups was that? Three? No, I think I'm at four. And adds Himalayan pink salt. It's supposed to neutralize the ions and stuff in the air. Negative energy, negative air. So I'm putting it into the bread. Uh, great. If you say so, Kelly melts butter. Ah! Then adds what didn't land on the counter into the bowl. Looking good. It's looking really good. I won't be having the French bread. Why not? Oh, it's gluten. <laughs> Don't sweat it. I'm sweating my ass off. That's one way of solving it. I think that Kelly, deep down, is a classy girl. Classy enough to serve meat and potatoes for the main course? You haven't had a piece of meat like this in your mouth in a long time. <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> this piece of meat costs $300. $300? And that's because it's family friend price. Sounds like a bad friend. Kelly butchers her beef, then gets it searing. I would never make tenderloin for a lot of people. If you have a beef with Kelly's menu, head to Twitter to spout off at hashtag CDWMC. It's looking good. But what matters is how it's cooked. Could be disastrous if the beef isn't done to my liking. Or Lisa's. Lisa likes her beef blue, very blue. It's all gonna be medium done. That's the way it should be, 134 degrees. That's medium. Might as well be chewing on a tire. Or potatoes. Trusted red potatoes are kind of boring. It's pedestrian. Yet filling. That'll feed six of us. Uh, your math is off. There's only five. Oops, I can stay there. She's a klutz like me. That's why they call me Klutzy Kelly in the kitchen. Klutzy Kelly coats her potatoes in olive oil, herbs de Provence, garlic powder, paprika, and pepper. Just in case you can't see where the pepper is milling, I have my own flashlight. So impressive. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Kelly gives the spuds a stir, tosses them into the oven, and moves on to dessert. Cherry chocolate cheesecake. Yummy. I don't really like cheesecake. What's not to like? Dummy can make it, anybody can do it, a child can put it together. Including you? I've never actually made a cheesecake before. Suspected as much. Kelly starts with cream cheese, adds cane sugar. Couple of eggs. Corn flour, orange zest, table cream, and starts mixing. I hope she goes for quality. Hmm, I get the feeling Kelly's more of a quantity kind of gal. Spot the plug somewhere. Cheers. To bashing up chocolate. Chocolate's an aphrodisiac. Hubba hubba. I love chocolate. Kelly adds chocolate to her cream cheese mixture. It's got to be dark chocolate because that's the real thing. Then moves on to the cherry sauce. I just hope it's not like maraschino cherry. Maraschino. And their bings. Kelly adds orange zest. Orange is uplifting. Orange essential oil, so. <sighs> adds a cinnamon stick along with orange juice. This is a handy dandy little citrus juicer. Uh, it's called a reamer, and it's not made for cleaning your nails. <laughs> I can't stand it when people are not sanitary. Hear that, Kel? See now, if you weren't here, that would have went into the sauce. Kelly adds cherry sauce to the cream cheese mixture and dumps it all over her crust. Mmm, that's perfect. And into the oven it goes until everyone arrives. Can't wait to see Kelly crash and burn. I'm ready to take these suckers down. Bring on the blondes. Done and dusted. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, can you teach an old dog? Steve. New tricks? Come and sit next to me and you can have your pet me instead. <laughs> Good God, man. 
It's the second night in a culinary throwdown for a thousand dollar prize. And tonight's host, party girl Kelly, has her outfit changed, hair did, and is ready for anything. Let's get the party started. With last night's host, Steve. Hello. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. And relax. I was more than ready to enjoy myself and party down. Cheers to that. What Cheers. We drinking? This is a mimosa. Which is what? Sparkling wine and orange juice. How manly. A little bit girly. It's got alcohol in it. Drink it. Not bad. Goes down easy. And it might just be the perfect way to loosen up next guest, Uptight Brad. Hi there. Hey, Come on good in. To see you again. Nice to see you. Yeah, right. I don't buy that one. Or what Steve's selling. Just gonna play with the pussy. Let's call it a cat. That's yeah, part for the course for Steve. Can I have a seat there beside Steve? While Kelly gets you a drink. It's nice. I think it's called a mimosa. Think? Someone who doesn't know what a mimosa is is definitely not a foodie. <laughs> I did actually know what a mimosa was. Right. Surely next guest, k, -K, -K katie will. Hey, Kelly! Hey. Come on in. Nice, nice to see you. Wearing the same outfit. Which was a little disappointing for me. Meow. Yeah. Oh, hello, kitty. Did I say you could address me, human? You can tell this is a prima donna cat. Turn the cameras off. I'm having a bath. The whole, you know, private looking in front of the, the guest was getting to be a bit much. At least there was something to look at. And the only thing better than a cat is a sex kitten. Enter Lisa. Hi, Hi Gordon. Nice to see you. All done up. OK, is that good? The guy sure thinks so. Lisa walked in with the pink strapless dress. I thought, well, here comes Lisa. Well, the room lightens up a little bit when Lisa walks in. The cat's excited. What is this perfect creature's name? <laughs> yeah, I believe the cat's name was... I don't care. Jealous much? Come and sit next to me and you can have your pet me instead, though. <laughs> Perv. He's a dirty old man. Nah, he's just nuts. I need to get my walnuts roasted. How long does that take? When I hear the walnuts screaming, that means they're about to burn. Screaming? Since Kelly's lost her mind, maybe it's in the bedroom. Behave yourself, Lisa, now. Behave yourself. Oh, my. I will. Trust me. And what is this? Oh, you know, a painted belly cast. Oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Isn't it, though? Um, it was different. So yeah, that's what that it quite, feels like to quite, be pregnant. I <laughs> suit you, is it? Mummy. Yummy. <laughs> Don't let her husband hear you say that. My husband, although he's very large, would never punch anybody in the face. Too bad. Lisa, do you think that's Kelly's? I don't think so. She does not look like she's had a child. Not at all. Yep, hats off to her. Ooh, look at all of these. Put one on Brad. Put one on Brad. I think this one is oh, nice well, for you. Oh, yes. You dress me up. Yes, here we go. I think this one for me. Yeah, How do nice. I look? Lie, Brad, lie. Two thumbs down. I see something even better for you. Brad in a belly dancing scarf? He even danced for me. I'll believe it when I see it. Let's see there this. There we go. Very oh, nice. That? Excellent. I wouldn't go that far. Shake my junk. <laughs> junk? <laughs> who shakes their junk? Brad, that's who. My junk is impressive. And so are Kelly's toasted walnuts and French cream dressing. Everybody's going to be ooing and aahing over this salad because it's going to taste so good. And they're going to be like, like, what? How did you make that dressing? When you were so busy baking bread. Bread is not that difficult to make at home. Or turn down. I'm not going to try it because I'm not on the wheat and gluten, as you know. One night of gluten is not going to kill you. But drinking in the kitchen might. Cheers. Bottom up. Mmm, straight vodka. Mm. Perfect. Then let's get that salad served. I thought it was very contemporary and very pretty. Psst, Lisa, it's just a salad. It was a lump of stuff. It's a mix of greens with beets, carrots, red pepper, strawberries, mandarin oranges. Oranges via the mandarin? Well, I take everything back. It is more than just a salad. I didn't notice any mandarins in there. Oops. Mm, right. I forgot them. <laughs> That's probably why I didn't notice them then. But nonetheless... It was quite tasty. Spectacular. It wasn't spectacular. And why is that, Brad? I didn't really find much of the, the French cream. I don't know, I was expecting maybe something a little bit, maybe heavier. You certainly couldn't get any drier. My name is Brad. I think this food is good, and I speak very slowly. I think you did a great job with this salad, uh, especially the beets. I like them grated like that. Kudos to the cook. If it wasn't cooked. 
Listen, Brad, let it go. Because after all, the past is the past. What would you come back as? Reincarnation. Bollocks. Easily. Dog. Can I love you? Can I love you? Maybe a dolphin? I like being out in the ocean. Who actually would want to spend their life underwater, dark, wet, being chased by killer whales? What kind of life is that? It's a no-brainer for me. Hugh Hefner. <laughs> All day long. I would probably want to come back as Hugh Hefner as well. Ah, uh, young love. I've always had it in my mind that I need to come back as a man. Um, because I just like to pee on a tree. <laughs> You for can. Just, for just a minute. No, no, I can't hold it and pee. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you do. You can hold mine and I'll pee. Oh, Lord. <laughs> How crass. Yeah, I wouldn't call it crass. I would call it Steve. Steve is looking for anyone to hold on to it right now. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, things get dental. I think I got a, like, lemon seed or something. That, like, hurt my tooth. Uh-oh, we have a problem. It's the second night of the competition, and Kooky Kelly's even surprised herself. I mean, who knew I could stay sober? Yeah, you're usually plastered. Kelly, we were walking around your bedroom, Steve and I, and we found a, a sculpture that looked a lot like the female form um, in, the, in the pregnant form. And Lisa was fumbling her breasts while she was in there, by the way. <laughs> well, they were humongous. Assuming, <laughs> assuming it was you. Well, I know it's hard to tell because I have this incredible body, but eight years ago, I did deliver a baby boy. Wow. Shocking. Who would have thought she had a kid? If you ever do want to do anything else like that on your body again, <laughs> I'm more than happy to vacillate. Oh, you'd like to help that, would you? Steve, the lubricant man. <laughs> Brad made a funny. I don't think that it was funny. But this is... I thought that babies were born through your belly buttons. That would hurt. And the JJ doesn't? Enough said. And Kelly's added just enough lemon juice to her sautéed mushrooms. So I want to make sure I have no seeds left in these lemons. Don't you mean in the pan? If it got onto the wrong plate, a.k.a. Brad, I would be in some deep... With the seeds cleared, Kelly adds cream and checks on her beef. It's in between medium and well, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. Perfect. But I took the meat thermometer out and I see blood. If there's any trace of pink or red in it, I can't eat it. Uh-oh, we have a problem. We might do. I like my mooing. Rip off the horns, rip off the tail, and I will bite right in. I'm envisioning her running in her stiletto heels and like latching her teeth into the back of a cow as it's running away. Kelly plates her medium meat, adds mushroom cream sauce. Get a little snowing of parsley. Then topped with carrots and voila, the main is ready to serve. Okay, guys, here comes your main course. This looks really good, Kelly. Thank you. It's lovely. Me. She did a good job kind of layering everything together. Enjoy. The not so made to order beef tenderloin. I could really tell, like, from the first sight that that beef was way overdone. If you don't know the difference between well done beef and beef well done, check out the recipes at WNetwork.com. The beef tenderloin is just a little overdone. Just a little? It's a lot overdone for me, I'm sorry. However, if you will allow me, I would love to take this home and mix it up with something so it does not go to waste. You hated it, but you want to take it home? I just like to share all my experiences with my husband. I don't buy it. I'm the complete opposite of Lisa. Mm. I'm ugly and she's gorgeous. No, <laughs> I, I like my meat. Well done. Two thumbs down. They had a stuff pork chop last night. This is like two ends of the spectrum. I thought it was excellent. Too bad it wasn't seedless. <laughs> I think I got a, like, lemon seed or something. That, like, hurt my tooth. Uh-oh. The lemon seed that got away, because I was sure I got them off. And now I overheard Kate complaining that this lemon seed almost broke her teeth. Uh, how hard could it be? Ew. I could eat that. Spit that out. And get back to your guests, because things are picking up. What was your best pickup line? We are chatting away in the pub. And this, this works, obviously, more in Canada. And, uh... She would say, are you from England? And I said, yeah, have you, have you got any English in you? And she would join me say no, and I said, would you like some? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I heard it before, seen it done, not impressed. Steve's a player. you got to be wearing a tool belt. The line is, uh, do you want to screw? Lame. 
Brad even managed to make sex talk boring. A guy will say to me, how did you do that? And I'll say, what? Do what? See, how did you take the stars from the skies and put them in your eyes? Uh, Let's just get to the core of things. That whole apple a day thing is gone. It's now an orgasm a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> yeah, why stop at one? Brad! Does it matter who's there at the time? <laughs> Can you be alone? Then you go into the hole. If a tree fell in the woods and nobody was there to hear it, would they? <laughs> the tree still fell. Hear, hear! Yeah! Two orgasms! Go orgasms, go. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, the claws come out. I think we've got some discount plates going yeah. on here. Yeah. Kate, she kind of pulled out a little bit of a bitchy attitude. It's the second night in a dinner party battle between these five strangers. How would you describe yourself? Five words. I'll go with uh, reliable, organized. I'll go with organized. I can be organized too. Solid guy. Reliable. Solid. Solid. solid yeah. Organized. Boring. People do not say I'm boring. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> I always go with the cute, smart, funny, and nice, and oh. sexy. <laughs> How about you, Steve? Wham bam, thank you, man. <laughs> Oh, full sentences. Zing. Kate, she kind of pulled out a little bit of a bitchy attitude. Case in point. I think we've got some discount plates going on. Uh, no way. Scandal. I have to give her kudos for finding a great deal. deal. Yeah, <laughs> but these are beautiful. Then you know what? And if she'd taken the sticker off, I would have had no idea. But you, <laughs> you know, you don't walk around with the tags on your clothes. I agree uh -oh. with you. you got to take the price tags off. Bless her. And Kelly, because she's making a dessert shooter. This is my favorite part. You're going to shake it, aren't you? Kelly gets her cheesecake plated, topped with cherries and chocolate. And voila. The final course is ready to serve. Wow. The dessert looked great. A cherry chocolate cheesecake and a black forest shooter. Dig in. I have to say that I am a cheesecake aficionado, and I love this one so much that I am going to save half of it for my husband. Again? That's a whole meal she doesn't have to make. Waste not, want not. I love it. Liar. All I honestly could taste was the cream cheese. That's weird, it being a cheesecake and all. Is there a lot of cheese in there, or...? See previous comment, re-cheesecake. It was a bit dry, but it, it was... The, the presentation was superb. I'll give it one thumbs down on the dessert. Just eat the cherries on top there. They'll be good for you. I don't like you. cherries. Just do the shooter. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Delicious. Cheers. Bottoms up. The shooter is probably the best part of the dessert. Thumbs up to Kelly. Yep, she is pretty talented. I'm going to tie a cherry stem and a knot in my mouth. Do it, do it, do it. Kelly can do it, for sure. And fast. That's a commercial uh, right there. Uh, Her man is a lucky guy. <laughs> K-E-L-L-Y. Kelly! Is bursting at the seams. This is a fat girl thigh rub. It's getting up there. Hopefully nobody noticed. Tonight, I'm going to give Kelly a... A nine? Six. Dessert was a total flop, so I'm giving her an eight. You pop my cherry for that, you gain a seven. She served me medium beef, and that's why she's getting a medium score. Which lands Kelly in a tie with Steve at 28 points. But there's still three nights to go. I've got the rest of the week to relax and enjoy and criticize. See you next Tuesday. In it to win it. That's the name of the game. I am so excited. Tomorrow's my day. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to rock the house. I hope the leftovers are in here. <laughs> on the next episode of Come Dine With Me, Cutesy Kate is on fire. I am not about surviving. I am about superseding. As she turns on the charm. Wow. Oh, nice. Very nice. But will her guests be turned off? Barf. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Somehow I'm going to tame that drunk monkey. Oh, my God. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, can Miss Goody Two Shoes? Boring. Handle bad reviews? Disgusting. Wow. I feel like 
like I've been abandoned. I think Kate's looking a little frazzled. All right, I'm back in my zen. <laughs> Tens all around. <laughs> It's the midweek mark in the race for a thousand smackaroos, and hitting her hosting strike tonight is overachiever Kate. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a certified diabetes educator. And that's not all. I can be funny. Prove it. Um, I don't have any jokes right now. <laughs> Ugh, you're the worst. I'm the worst at dancing. Um, I'm the worst at singing. The worst at uh, rapping. But Brad, who's hosting tomorrow night, is the best at playing with army men and flying under the radar. Walk softly, but carry a big stick. Oh, brother. Brad is the most adorable geek. But not adorable enough to land a haughty housewife like Lisa, who plans on hosting the final night with sass and class. I plan on delivering a pure package of decor, food, experience, entertainment. It's going to be a very well-rounded event. I love housewives. But on night one, not everyone loves Steve's British fare, so he only got 28 points. I don't even remember Steve's night. But miraculously, Kelly stayed sober enough last night to serve up a mandarin orange salad. She forgot the mandarins, God love her. And overdone meat. What about the overdone meat? Uh, nothing. And let's not mention the lemon seed either. I think I got a, like, lemon seed or something. That, like, hurt my tooth. Kate's pissing me off these days. And just wait till Kelly finds out she's tied with Steve. Yikes. Prepare to lose. Calories, because Kelly's serving a hippy-dippy salad for her starter. What the? I know, sounds familiar, right? Kelly made a salad for her appetizer last night. Ooh, the plot thickens. I think she, like, secretly envies me a little bit, you know? Like, Stephen's house, I wore a hair clip in my hair. What does she wear to my house? A hair clip in her hair. Let the conspiracy theories begin. Join the great salad debate on Twitter, hashtag CDWMC. This appetizer is not rocket science. Nope. All Kate has to do is shred leaf lettuce and kale into a bowl. Kale is one of the super, super healthy foods. I think they'll appreciate a nice salad. Salad, whoopity doo. Maybe Kate's homemade dressing will be more impressive. She mixes olive oil, orange juice, and... Two tablespoons of mustard. Followed by fresh tarragon, garlic, and apple cider vinegar, all whisked together. Whoa! What happened? Oh, I caught myself. I'm not impressed. Then the main course might be more your thing, because Kate's raising the bar and serving... Oh. Red wine braised rabbit. Oh, great. Not a fan? Don't eat rabbit. Can't stand a rabbit. I will barf if I see a rabbit. Don't worry, you don't have to see it, because the rabbit's been quartered and bagged. It's going to be so good. The proof is in the eating. And the cooking. Slow and slow is the best way to go. I'm going to be braising it and then slow cooking it for the afternoon, hopefully. It doesn't sound very easy. Oh, but it is. All Kate has to do is sear the rabbit, then add chopped up onions, garlic, herbs, wine, and bugs to the slow cooker. He's going to soak, and he is going to soak up all of that delicious flavor. It's kind of freaking me out. Drunk bunny. I might have to leave. I might have to walk out. But then you'd miss the gnocchi side dish. Oh, gross. <laughs> I hate gnocchi. It's gnocchi. Gnocchi are those beautiful little potato dumplings. Actually, that's traditional gnocchi. This is Parisian gnocchi. What makes gnocchi Parisian? Glad you asked, Bradley, because this version is made with butter and Steve's favorite, gluten-filled flour. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Kate adds herbs, cheese, and eggs to the dough. You know it's done when you kind of, it's just slowly slide up the spoon. I really honestly don't care, because I'm not going to eat the gnocchi. Kate cuts the gnocchi into a pot of boiling water and hopes for the best. I know they're going to be watching my every move, waiting for me to trip up. She had a lot of little tiny complaints last night. Can you say karma? Tonight, we'll see if she can walk that walk. One thing's for sure, the only thing sweeter than revenge is Kate's dessert. Caramel pot de creme with apple cider sponge cake and amaretto whip. Desserts don't do anything for me. They don't crank my chain. They don't rock my boat. Uh-oh. Do I look nervous? Do I look nervous? No, just smug. Kate is definitely starting to get on my nerves. This might be the time to, like, start, you know, doing my yoga chants. Um, um. She's the one to beat. 
To make her sponge cake, Kate whips up eggs, flour, and adds two cups of not brown, not yellow, but plain old white sugar. In the end, as a dietitian, sugar is sugar. The body doesn't know the difference, only your tongue does. Dietitian, this. This is looking beautiful. Cake is often my disaster. I've burned my share of cakes. Probably because I'm one of those put a little here, put a little there sort of people. Cake is much more of a, a chemistry, a science, and if you, you chemistry, well, I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> Which means our guests are going to get the last word. Kate is so going down. I'm Brad, and I'm here to do business. Let's do this. Woo! Bollocks to ill. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will Kate's salad get tossed? I threw up in my mouth a bit. It's the third day in a dinner party duel for $1,000 in cash, and good girl Kate has changed into a miniskirt to go with her mega attitude. I'm just ready to show everyone a fun time. And no one does fun like first guest, Kelly. Hey, Hi, Kate. Kate. Nice to see you. Bestie. Kate's a bit fake. Welcome to my home. How Thank you doing? You. I'm good. And bored. <sighs> Perhaps an adult beverage would help. This is a dirty blonde triple threat. So aptly named for my ladies. So the secret <laughs> is to spill the matches. Just gonna give that a light burn. Easy there, Shaky. She was nervous. Cheers, thank you. Here's to the middle of the week. And to the next guest, Thrill a Minute Brad. Hi, Brad. Hi, Kate. A match made in heaven. Kate's a fake, Brad's a geek. This is killing me. These are for you? Tulips? Flowers have a funny way of making girls interested. You're not kidding. I notice you hide your pipes. Brad has pipes? I work out a little bit. You want to take a gander? Really? You'll show them off to us? Do you want to see them? Not really. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, nice. Very nice. I threw up in my mouth a bit. Hopefully this will be easier to swallow. It's Steve. How's my favorite Hi, bread? Hi. How are you? Good. Oh, give me a hug. For God's sake, just give me a beer. Nope, it's another cocktail. It's a champagne, honey liqueur, and a burnt orange twist. Mmm. Who the hell do I have to bang to get a beer? Cheers. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Psst, they didn't have a choice. And neither does Leggy Lisa. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, you're looking fabulous. In half a dress. That was to kind of scare the girls off. Mission accomplished. With boobs that big and she's that tall, that girl has got acrobatic balance. You look lovely. Don't hold back, Gramps. Ho, ho, holy schmoly, baby. I love your shoes. Thank you. She meant Lisa's shoes. They weren't shoes, they were stilts. Ah. <laughs> what was that? That's Kate's fake laugh. <laughs> All right, folks, it's night three. Thank you so much for coming. Here is to a fabulous night. So, so much for coming. Kate was doing a little bit of a fake act. Strategic, baby. Actually, strategic would be not losing her tongue. <sighs> and locking her bedroom door. Wow, Look this is this. Kate's boudoir. Oh my gosh, her shoe collection. Kitten heels, so stylish. You cannot be stylish when you're talking about two-inch heels. I'm sorry. Not. Hang on, there's something. What is that? A naughty bustier. She's a little bit more like me than I thought. You want to borrow it? Maybe one oh, day. Let's oh, try it let's, now. Let, let's see if that'll work. Uh, oh, no, yeah, that works. It's not fitting. That works, baby. She looks mighty fine. Better keep mom about it, though. I don't particularly like the smell of mums. I don't give two <laughs> about the mums. Except that they're in water. I was feeling kind of parched. I haven't got a beer mm -hmm. or an alcoholic drink. Yeah, I definitely need some vino. Relax, you'll get wine just as soon as Kate finds it. What did I do with my ribs? Beats me. Really? Afraid so. I have them. Where? I know I have them set out. Train wreck. Kate gets her caboose in gear, finds the wine, loads on the orange tarragon dressing, and her hippy dippy salad is ready to serve. You are ladies. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh, who's fake now? She doesn't even get any kind of score for presentation on that salad. It was just some lettuce thrown together with some cranberries and chickpeas. So please enjoy. Or at least try to.
It was uh, tough to swallow, tough to chew. That would be the kale. This is my first time having raw kale, and I like it, and I'm going to make sure that I eat all of it. Uh-oh, no leftovers for hubby. If I leave half of this, I'm going to wrap it up and take it home for Lisa's Thank you. <laughs> so, Thank you. But... I appreciate that. Glad someone does. <laughs> I think the fact Lisa takes this food home for us is hilarious. I love the taste of your orange tarragon dressing. I can tell there's a little Dijon mustard kick in there. Oh, you noticed. Of course. Any foodie would know. My first question is, why hippy dippy? So, so the reason it's hippy dippy is this salad idea originally came when I took my partner to this vegan, raw, gluten-free. Boring. Her partner didn't think so. I'm just curious. You know, we've heard a lot about this talk about you having a partner. But I have to ask. Uh, no you don't. Are you a lesbian? Dun, 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 dun. I am not a lesbian. Oh, thank God. No. What? I was just joking. I was just joking. Party har har. I thought it was hilarious. You would. Poor old Brett. On a slightly more risque note, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to figure out what their stripper name is. Mm. Yeah, in grade nine. Been there, done that. It's the name of the first pet you had and the name of the first street you lived on. Boring. My stripper name is Buddy Hawthorne. Boring. Mine's uh, Gumby Athlon. <laughs> Gumby Adlon, yeah. flexible stripper. Yeah, that's right, Gumby. <laughs> is that not sexy? Boring. Corker's Orton is my stripper name. Keen Bobber. Steve? I actually never had a pet in my life. Oh, poor Steve. The only thing I used to play with a lot was during puberty. Oh. oh. And um, yeah. some people said he was a python. I called it a snake, so. The boa. We just we just basically shortened it to 12 inches. I used to live on McGraw, so I just called it, I was called 12 inch McGraw. More like 12 millimeter McGraw. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, it's handbags at dawn. Let me tell you how hard it must be so hard to be a housewife. Wow. We're in the middle of a week-long foodie feud, and hostess Kate wants to win by a hair. All right, let's let's start with the rabbit. This is falling off the bone. Delicious. I'm so happy. That makes one of you. I myself am a little freaked out with the rabbit. The little bunnies like this. They do this, and then they do this. They got their little ears, and they bounce, bounce, bounce. I can't eat that. So uncultured. I know that there's some anti-rabbit people. And you know what? It's just because you haven't been exposed to it. Au contraire. I've had rabbit once before, and I was physically sick. Oh. I rather enjoy rabbit. And uh, if it's done right, it can be really good. Brown noser. Girls, uh -huh. I think Brad's sticking up for Kate tonight. And that calls for a drink. Kate, can we get some water? Say please. Not gonna happen. Are we feeling a little dehydrated? Little oh, tiny no. bit. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm just gonna leave this here just in case. Kelly would like to complain. You think I was hosting tonight by serving all your glasses of water? Oh, wow. Oh my god, Steve is totally loving the drama. Kate adds tomato sauce to her gnocchi, starts to plate, and panic. Do I look panicked? Do I look panicked? Yep. Kate plops on watery ratatouille, shredded bunny, and hops to serving her main. Here we are, ladies. Aw, Kate's like the mama bird feeding her babies. It looked like uh, it had already been chewed up and spit out. The main didn't present well at all. Now, now, don't gnocchi it till you try it. So, this is my wine braised rabbit, my Parisian style gnocchi, and twisted ratatouille. Please enjoy. I love when gnocchi is paired with the tomato sauce. Really? I like it better with like a better butter stage sauce. Well, at least you didn't say you hated it. I hate gnocchi. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things wow. that I despise the most. And part of it is because it's potato. Potato, potato. Sorry to interrupt you, but there's no potato in that gnocchi. Ooh, let's call the whole thing off. This is Parisian style gnocchi, so it's actually cheese and flour and butter based. So there. It's still gnocchi, it's disgusting. The gnocchi for me was was great. It was, um, I liked the fact that you had some heat in it, and it was really nice. I don't eat it because of the pasta and the flour. Bunny don't got no gluten. I don't eat rabbit. I detest rabbit. Whatever, princess, just eat the ratatouille. Unfortunately, there was eggplant in it. 
down like eggplant. Well, it's not like it's the end of the world. If there was a zombie apocalypse, what would be the last thing you'd want to do? Me, my wife, and sweet love. That's all I need. God love you. <laughs> I think you all know what I would do. Take some food home to your husband. That's right. Speaking of which... Steve, actually, may I have your rabbit portion? If you're not going to eat it, I do not want it to go to waste. Darling, you're more than welcome to. Okay, hand it over. Why don't we uh, do a communal uh, amalgamator leftover uh -uh. for your husband? Would that be helpful? Uh -uh. He seems to be hungry. <laughs> you claim to be this domestic housewife, but you continue to take him leftovers. Do you? For your husband, which means Kelly. that you actually aren't cooking. Kelly, let me <laughs> let me tell you how hard it is to feed a two. <laughs> Six foot seven pound it monster. must be so hard to be a housewife. <laughs> Jealous much, Kelly? All I want to do is stay home, lay in bed, look pretty. I will have you know that this is all just an image. The inside little girl right here is the purest of the pure. Purest of the pure. Her outsides are my insides. Ah, you go, girl. <laughs> Maybe there's a little bit of a racy side to you. Explain. Tell us, tell us. Oh, everyone. What's the real Kate? Asks the man who snooped her bustier. I think she's not going to let out, is she? We're not going to lay it out on the table in the on first the table, night. Wouldn't then it? we're just going to keep it in the closet. <laughs> she's not gay, Kelly. I can't help but notice your drink is empty. Would you like it some is. more? Yes. Right. I think it's imperative she has some more. <laughs> I think she's had enough. I don't think I drank enough. I don't want to say sloppy. But. Kelly enjoys a glass of wine or a bottle of three. If only she could handle it. I've got a monkey at my table right now, and she's flinging wine. Retaliation time. I know you're a beer man. Yes, darling. So I have a little treat for you there. Just hey, so I love you. Thank you, darling. Ooh, bribing him with beer. Good move. I totally respect it. If only Kate did. It's really driving me nuts that Steve is drinking my beer, but he wouldn't eat my milky. Coming up on Come Dine With Me. Ooh, look at that. Perfect heart. Love is all you need. Mmm, not my thing. It's night three, and hostess Kate would rather hit it than quit it. This will not kill me. This will only make me stronger. And by it, I mean Kelly. Kelly tonight was hard on Kate. Kelly was my ally. I feel like I've been abandoned. But dessert should win her over. Oh, look at that. Perfect heart. Aw, how sweet. Well, I haven't got a sweet tooth. So that's, that's, that's the truth of the matter. I like spice. Your belly comes from the beer and not the dessert then. Okay. OMG, Brad called Steve fat. His score has just gone down. If you want to keep a trim tummy, then don't go to wnetwork.com for Kate's full fat and full flavor dessert recipe. If this doesn't win them over, they've got no Taste. Kate spoons on the runniest whipped cream ever, and dessert is ready to serve. This is a caramel cream pot with an apple cider sponge cake on top and then amaretto whip. I'm going to tell you one thing. Yes, Mr. Gluten-Free. That was one of the best desserts I've ever had. <laughs> what can I say? That, that makes me so happy. I won over the dessert hater. That, that was tasty. It's a fair play. The carrot, the pot de caramel in the bottom was delicious. Lisa speaks French? Who knew? I think we know that she has a French maid costume. But does she make amaretto whipped cream like Kate in said costume? It's a keeper. The amaretto was in there. It was excellent. It looked good. It tasted good. It couldn't have been better. In your opinion. I expected a much more pronounced amaretto taste. Amaretto is one of my favorite liqueurs. Do you have a least favorite? Nope. Didn't think so. No dessert is ever complete without a spot of chocolate, so I'm a bit disappointed. Then just wait till you see what Kate's planned next. I have a surprise for you all, but I need you to head outside for it. I was thinking, just because of her age and the driveway, it would be hopscotch. And? It was worse. So much worse. This is Carrot Cup. The object of the game is to take your can and knock it along the driveway until you knock over the tall boy. Fun! I just thought it was kind of crude. Which means Steve should be a shoe-in. Ready, Steve? Yeah. How are you doing? Oh. Come on, you got it! Gentle at What are you, a limp dick or what? Bradley? The cheeky bastard. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Kelly. <laughs> Drunk much? 
I thought the carrot thing was stupid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I give up. Quitter. Lisa's turn. Show us what you can do in those heels. Right there! Oh, oh you hips, missed it. Right hips. there! Yes! Hips. There! Yes! Come on! More! Oh. More! Mm, not my thing. Certainly seems to be Brad's. He's got I don't this, like the way he's got, got, he's got this sussed. He's got it sussed. Oh, my God. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, my God. Go on, son. <laughs> Carrot Cup King. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we did see a different bread, but it was still boring. Now that my night is over, I'm ready to crawl into bed and ready to make somebody else's life a living hell. <laughs> but first, the scores. I didn't like the rabbit too much, and the game itself was a little bit juvenile, so I am giving Kate a six. Tonight I'm giving fake Kate a six. I'm going, I'm a little bit hungry, but the fact that I got a beer, I'm giving Kate a six. I'm giving Kate an eight, and it rhymes. And so does Kate and Not So Great, which describes her last play score of 26. The best part about it tonight is trash talking Kate. Poor girl. I think me and Kelly are going to just laugh our asses off the last two nights. This thing is mine. Tonight, the Carrot Cup, tomorrow, the whole shebang. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me, Beige Brad shows his true colors. Gluten-free, gluten, gluten-free, gluten. And monkeys around. <laughs> but will it be too little? Oops. I might puke. Too late? I hate Brad right now. No, obviously, because I'm the best. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will Brad put the eek... Oh, there's a pig in here. Yuck. In geek? Bad as geek. Meow, meow. Geek. Gluten-free, gluten. Gluten-free, gluten. Scientifically speaking, I'm number one. It's the penultimate day in a cooking contest for a thousand clams, and hosting tonight is Boring Brad, who's about as exciting as watching paint dry on his military man. It's a therapeutic thing from just sitting there painting the stuff. Don't you do anything fun? You know, give me a spreadsheet, you know, I like to play around with those. I said fun. I found it very entertaining. But then again, Lisa doesn't get out much, what with trying to keep her husband happy and getting ready for her party tomorrow night. I've been grocery shopping today. I've been doing putting beautiful flower arrangements together, so I'm really excited. Oh, to be a housewife. How hard is it to be a housewife? I can't imagine it's very hard with no kids at home. But then Steve, who scored 28 points on night one, isn't known for his imagination, because he had a cockney rhyming game. Plates of meat are? Feet. Correct. Oh, oh, yeah. And Banoffee Pie, very original Union Jack. Wow. For a British guy, Steve's teeth aren't that bad. And if Kelly had planned a bit better, she probably wouldn't have split her pants, forgot to strain her mushroom sauce. I think I got a, like, lemon seed or something. That, like, hurt my tooth. Or tied with Steve, for that matter. I want to win. I want the money. I want to tell everybody I won the competition. Oh, please don't make me sit next to Kelly tonight. That's because Kelly got all up in good girl Kate's grill last night. Are you a lesbian? Kate, can we get some water? Kelly was a bit of a bitch. I wouldn't mind an apology from Kelly today. Just saying. I wouldn't hold your breath. Kate's a bit of a thorn in my side. You know, she tries to be older than what she is and so impressionable and proper and her clothes don't match. <laughs> but at least she doesn't ask for a doggy bag every night like some people. Lisa. Steve, actually, may I have your rabbit portion? I hope that Lisa's husband enjoyed his breakfast this morning. He didn't. The rabbit was definitely the worst leftover that he's had this week. And so far, Kate's got the worst score of the week. She's sitting in last place with 26 points. I know I can win this. Hear that, Brad? Yeah. Yep, what? That's a bit, yeah. Um, so you just want some statements? That'd be nice. I'm going to blow him out of the water. <laughs> no, it's too geeky. He's not a geek. Uh, yeah, he is. Just check out his lid. The hat I'm wearing is uh, actually uh, part of a getup uh, I wear in uh, a men's coping club that I'm a member of. Brad said member. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I tell you? Strange man. With an equally strange dessert, because Brad is making warm German apple pancakes with vanilla ice cream. 
Specken die Deutsch. I've never met a warm German. I wonder if he's making his own ice cream. It's Brad, of course he is. And he's even using a real vanilla bean, which he puts into equal parts, cream and milk, and heats on the stove. Pretty sexy, Bradley. I think Brad is probably the same in the kitchen as he is in the bedroom. He puts on a big show, but in the end, I'd rather eat out. No comment. Bless her. Brad fills his individual cast iron pans with butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, and sliced up Granny Smith apples. I'm impressed. Yep, he's really cooking with gas. Now you have the cinnamon and the apples are going to start to uh, soften up and it, uh, it smells fabulous. Kind of like victory. I thought I wanted him, would you? Then you better pray that something goes wrong with the ice cream maker. When I moved in, I actually threw away the ice cream maker and haven't heard the end of it since. And so we don't hear about Steve's non-gluten diet for the fourth night in a row. Brad's making two pancake batters, one with regular flour and the other with rice flour. So, Steve, this is for you. Here comes your gluten-free dessert, buddy. Bromance! The cheeky bastard. Brad puts his batters, plural, into the fridge, then heads out to the butchers for a little shopperoo. I'm getting a little worried. And with good reason, because Brad's appetizer is port braised beef shank, served on herbed polenta with roasted tomatoes and mascarpone cream. My husband loves beef shanks. What is a beef shank? Isn't that the part that they cut off, you shank it? Isn't that a golf term? You're thinking of jail, but in this case, it actually means the leg. I'm um, thinking about doing them in the oven. Uh, what temperature would you suggest for a braising? 275, uh, somewhere around that mark. Brad heads home with the beef and gets ready to braise. It sounds delicious. Sure does, as Brad sautés onions, celery, and carrots in a Dutch oven, adds tomato paste, and a whole lot of port. I don't like pork. Good. Then more for Brad. Brad better open up that liquor cabinet tonight. Brad puts the seared shanks in to soak up the juices. It should be well done and fall off the bone. If you have a bone to pick with Brad's menu, sound off on Twitter. Hashtag CDWMC. It looks a little complex. He's got a lot going on. Including a pot full of polenta. And this will uh, thicken up fairly quickly. Mmm, polenta. I love that stuff. Polenta, placenta, same thing. Brad adds roasted garlic to the pot. You never have too much garlic. And fresh thyme and chunks of brie, which is going to make it... Nice and creamy. I'm actually impressed. I'm excited. And you haven't even seen his main course yet. Maple glazed sea bass with bok choy, shiitake mushrooms, and jasmine rice. Sea bass is always a good choice. Right, because after all... Who doesn't like sea bass? Steve. I'm not a big fish person. But Brad knows how to sweeten the pot as he makes a marinade with maple syrup and miso paste. Miso horny. The sea bass will sit in the marinade until Brad cooks it just before serving. So all he has left to do is chop his veggies. What I'm looking for is uh, thick matchsticks. But will Brad be going up in flames tonight? Bring it on, Brad. Let's rock this joy. Hi, honey. I uh, just wanted to check and see. Do you like beef shank? Yeah, what about... What about sea bass? Okay, all right, I, I'll try my best to bring you something home tonight. Okay, love you, bye. Boom! Coming up on Come Dine With Me. Oh my God, how hot is cake tonight? A little heavy petting. Oh, there's a pig in here. Yuck. It's the fourth night in our week-long foodie feud and beige Brad has ditched the chef hat for a shiny shirt and a can-do attitude. This is my chance to show them what I'm made of. And the first one to get a glimpse is Kate. Hey, Kate. Hi, Brad. Great to see you. Come on in, please. Brad is all business. It's his pleasure. Oh, my God, how hot is Kate tonight? Sexy, right? Sexy but tasteful. I'm always sexy and tasteful. Kind of like Brad's cocktail. Oh, that's really nice. It's a twisted version of um, a Cape Cotter. A Cape Cotter is uh, cranberry juice and vodka. So hence, the red is the uh, cranberry juice. Uh, this actually is called a, a slow cape. It was a little awkward. Which fits right in with tonight's theme. Hi, hey, Kelly. Kelly. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Thanks. I brought the paper because I left your gift in the cab. Yeah, right, Kelly. My okay, it's at home. Please have a seat by Kate. OK. Besties. I definitely felt this gaping hole between me and Kelly. Whatever. Ooh, that's one heck of a cocktail. What's in there? Uh, it's actually uh, cranberry juice, uh, some vodka, and this uh, infused gin. It's actually called Slow, S-L-O-E. This isn't a spelling bee, Four Eyes. Here's Brad. Guess who don't like shapes? Steve. 
Hey, Steve, my man. Hey, Brian, good, good to see you. you. Good yeah. to see you, mate. Good to see you. This is for you. In a roundabout way. The thing I wanted most was to see Kay get drunk. Hi, Stephen. A.K.A. Jerry Old Steve. Hello, Kelly. A.K.A. Not Kate. Kate was uh, very... Um... Low cut. Kate has got the puppies out. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's right. That's right, Steve. I have boobs. But Brad's got something even better. I know Steve likes his beer, and he's taking the opportunity to uh, pre-chill a glass for him. Very smart, Bradley. You devious little note-taker. Thanks, Mike. Enjoy. Cheers. Big ears. What well on, Brad? And two thumbs up for last but not least, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hey, great to see How you. Are you? Excellent. Welcome. You, sir? Poindexter. Can I go cute instead? Cute. I think he's cute. Is that okay? Not if you're Steve. Elisa, please uh, have a seat uh, next you. to Kate on the stool. Thanks, Brad. You evil genius. I moved over to make a space for her next to me. Brad put her over next to him. Bastard. Block Steve. It's perfect. Welcome, guys. It's day four, and uh, let's have a great evening. Looking forward Thank to it. Let's do it. Cheers. While Brad heads to the kitchen to prep his app, Kate and Kelly find out what really gets his engine running. Oh! Look at Whoa. that! Yeah. Wow, Brad's got a big piece of vibrating metal between his legs. That is hot. For a geek. Bad-ass geek. Sweet wheels, brother. Maybe it's his wife's bike. And he's sitting on the back side saddle. For sure. What do you think he's got in his saddlebags, Kate? I don't know, calculators, pens? Surprise, surprise. This thing is huge. That's what she said. Who? The guinea pig? Oh, there's a guinea pig in here. Cute. Yuck. What type of grown man has a bloody guinea pig? And I'll tell you <gasps> what, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a guinea if you pick it up. Just do it. He is not letting me pick him up. Or maybe he just wants dinner first. This planta looks amazing. So I'm going to uh, invert it onto the sheet. Come on out, Polenta. Needs a little persuasion. Come on out, Polenta, please. There we go. Hmm, looks rectangular. Can you just go in the oven and get warmed right now for a few minutes? Which gives Brad time to pamper his guests. So, guys, the uh, app is almost ready. I do uh, have a wine that I'm going to suggest with it. Ooh, fancy. There's other people that know how to match wine. Hmm, maybe Kate would like sour grapes with her polenta. When the polenta comes together, it's nothing like it. And there's nothing like sharing your germs with a whole room full of people. Spot on. Brad uses his germy spoon to layer braised beef onto polenta. He tops with mascarpone whip and a roasted tomato. And Brad's appetizer is ready to serve. Kate. Thank you. You jerky jerk. Mr. Jerk. I hate you, Brad. <laughs> Hold it together, Kate. What the H is your big, fat, fancy problem? Look at the plate. Holy hell. It's beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Don't worry, there's still a chance it'll taste like crap. That was delicious. Well, there goes that theory. Damn it! <laughs> Brad, the taste of your meat is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I... It starts. Yeah, I, I don't get that comment often, but I'd like to hear that more, so. Your meat is so flavorful. That shank. I can't help it. It's just all there. So you liked it? Maybe a little bit. Can't say much. It was fantastic. Mm. The uh, polenta I was worried about. Mm. I, I only think I've only had it once, but it was fantastic. The beef was fantastic. The taste, the taste was great. It was, it was fantastic. Well done. He knocked it out of the park. It was lovely and perfectly portioned. The only reason why I have not finished my plate is because let's all laugh before I even say it. Breakfast for hubby. Lisa, do you got the leftovers? Do you got the leftovers for your husband, Lisa? Would he be mad if you ate the whole thing and didn't bring anything to him? I don't think he'd be mad at me. Are you sure? If she doesn't have a takeout bag, she's not getting in. I just want my hubby to experience the same things that I experience. All right, let's do it. It's not all about the husband tonight. Woo! Let's just do it. Oh, good girl. Yes, let's do good it. girl. Nothing like a little peer pressure. He's going to be so upset because this is so good. Aw, no prize for hubby. Have you ever been called a trophy wife? 
The trophy wife um, comparison, I actually don't take offense to that. Kate does. I'm a career woman myself. Boring. I take Lisa's life. If you want to become a trophy wife, you have three rules to follow. You gotta be a chef in the kitchen, a lady in the parlor, and a in the bedroom. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, and the guinea pig makes six. That is a no-no. Taboo. Are you serious? It's the fourth night in the Battle of the Foodies, and Brad's guests are in hog heaven. Kelly and I went into your garage and found this beautiful, beautiful motorcycle. Who knew? Brad never had me fooled. I knew what he was about for the first day. There's just nothing like, you know, getting out there, you know, on the road with the wind in your face and, you know, the sun and all that kind of stuff. Wow, Brad's practically a poet. I am not surprised. Well, sometimes you have to come by and take it for a okay. ride. Okay. 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 Gross. Well, Brad, I'm not surprised you're a biker. I've got to be honest. But I'm very surprised you got a bloody guinea pig. You have a pet guinea pig. What's its name? Pigor. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Check, please. Can we meet Pigor? Sure, if you want to. Bring him to the table. Don't bring him to the table. That is a no-no. Taboo. Sorry, Steve. Girls rule. So, guys, uh, oh. meet, uh, meet Pigor. Weird. Can I, can I pet Pigor? Sure, yeah. Oh, he's, uh, he's very pettable. Pigor is so cute. For an animal that eats its own feces. Heck, are you serious? Would I joke about feces? Oh, don't, oh. don't come near my bloody cutlery. <laughs> don't up Chuck yet. Brad still has his stir fry to make. Toss in our vegetables. And then? Check the sea bass. Good idea, Bradley, because? Sea bass can go terribly wrong when uh, overcooked. Uh -oh. See, I like my fish, like I like my red meat, you know, on the, I would rather have it on the rarish side than have it overcooked. No one asked you, Kate. The words Kate and hate rhyme. Let's figure it out. Or not. I was just gonna drink more wine. I'm interested in, in tasting it because I've never had sea bass. You're a sea bass virgin. But not for long, because Brad's plating his jasmine rice, stir fry veggies, and precariously placed fish. If you want to kick your competition in the sea bass, go to wnetwork.com for all of Brad's recipes. It's coming together really nicely. Brad's main course is ready to serve. Excuse my reach. And please try not to drool. I almost salivated onto the plate. It looked amazing. Presentation was fantastic. Says the man who hates rice, vegetables, and fish. Brad, I gotta ask you, are you a, are you a chef or what? No, I'm uh, not a chef. I, I, I have never had sea bass before. Hmm. I didn't know if I'd like it. Okay. It was amazing. But you hate fish. I fell in love with it. I think you killed that sea bass. I mean, the dish itself. Well, I didn't kill the sea bass, <laughs> but uh, thanks, thanks that for the... That was so tasty. Tasty or tasty? Oh, my God. Brad, this was, dare I say, orgasmic? No, you can say orgasmic. I, I, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed every little tiny bit of it. That good, huh? It tasted like... Butter. Butter, butter, butter. Butter. It was delicious. All of the levels of the food made sense. Your sauce was delicious. So in short, everyone hates Brad? Exactly. Careful or he'll call in the troops. These are uh, some uh, works in progress. He paints miniature soldiers. You've even painted the outline on their bloody goggles, man. It is one of my hobbies. Guinea pig doesn't seem so bad now, does it? It's adorable. We do little mock battles in that and uh, wait, so. Wait, okay. are you, hang on, <laughs> hang on, no, no, no. So you're telling me there's a bunch of grown men with their little army yeah. figurines and you guys are like going. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a worldwide cult. Nerds unite. Geek. Geeks rule. Coming up on Come Dine With Me. Woof, woof. Who let the dogs out? 
It's night four, and host Brad thinks he's making the grade. I seem to be running AAA right now. And it's so freaking frustrating. And you haven't even seen his double dessert yet. Gluten-free, gluten. Gluten-free, gluten. Gluten-free, gluten. I hate bread right now. No, well, obviously, because I'm the best. Mr. Overconfidence flips his pancakes out of the pans, tops with his homemade ice cream, caramel sauce, an apple chip, and dessert is ready to serve. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's so funny, guys? Kill me now. The dessert was also stunning, just like everything else. Steve, yeah. uh, I have a special surprise for you. I, I know you're uh, uh, no, you a non-gluten no. guy, so I've made one here with a non-gluten. <laughs> oh, you freaking kidding me. Kill me now. Uh, what you have is a, it's a warm German apple pancake. It's homemade vanilla ice cream, homemade salted caramel sauce, oh, cool. and uh, the homemade apple chips. Enjoy. Oh, <laughs> did you make the strawberries? <laughs> no, those I didn't. Did you, did you make the plate? No, I'm sorry, I can't take a shot. <laughs> Amateur. Delicious. 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 Wow, and none left for hubby. Ice cream doesn't travel well. Mm-hmm. Your homemade ice cream melted in my mouth. That's good, right? It wasn't really my thing. Well, someone's got an apple chip on their shoulder. The chip was a little bit too. It was getting right. stuck in my teeth. Other than that, like, every flavor was awesome. Yeah, but then again, you're not the one with a fake gluten intolerance who hates desserts. I think the biggest compliment I can give you tonight is I would have paid for this meal. That is a big compliment, yeah. and Steve, uh, I truly appreciate it. A great cook and gracious, too? <sighs> Brad's the worst. God love him. Oh, we're all screwed. Or will be if you repeat an animal noise and have to do a shot. I'm always in for a game when there's tequila involved. Take it away, Kate. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> Snake. <laughs> Cat. Woof, woof. Dog. Meow, meow. Cat's a repeat. Drink, 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 drink. Yay, Brad. Turns out Brad may have a little more fun under his hood than I thought. Hey, Barky, dog's been done. Shot, 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 shot! What, no doggy bag for the tequila? I'm a little inebriated. And Brad's flying high. Kaka, kaka. Give me the number four, quick. Thank God for chewy apples and crawly guinea pigs, or else you would have got a perfect score. You're getting a nine. Tonight, Brad put me on cloud nine. <laughs> Brad, it's a nine. Brad delivered a great meal. Um, but there was a guinea pig at the table, and I was grossed out. Seven. So Brad lands in first place with 34 points, and there's one to go. I'm actually now just going to get absolutely pissed tomorrow night at Lisa's ass. Still in it, baby. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. Ah! That a-hole Brad, he be going down. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me, it's the final night. Dun, dun, dun. The housewife is desperate. Nice. That's crazy stuff. Jeez. Will her guests say, I don't? Everyone loves a blonde. I think well. he loves it a little too much. <laughs> awesome. As the winner is revealed. It's money time. Oh my god, I did it. Coming up. Really? Yeah. It's the final night. That is nice. Will Lisa. Dun, 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 dun. Say I do to victory. Thanks for the thousand dollar wedding gift, everyone. I love it. It's the last day of the competition, and tonight's hosting honors go to hot housewife Lisa. I am actually a domestic engineer. Huh? Otherwise known as a housewife. With something to prove. When people first look at me, they think that I'm one of those high maintenance chicks. But let me tell you, they couldn't be further from the truth. Lisa has great assets. Meet master of the obvious, Steve, who scored a solid 28 points on night one. If I don't win, I don't give a rat's ass who wins. And neither does Kelly, because after hosting on night two and racking up 28 points, our girl just wants to... Get drunk and have fun. I have a rule of thumb. Never be the drunkest person at the table. The good news is that hasn't been difficult this week.
but Kate might wish she was sauced when she finds out she's sitting in last place after serving up some rascally rabbit on night three. I've had rabbit once before, and I was physically sick. Uh -huh. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And sometimes you underestimate the nerdy guy in the group, which is what happened last night at Brad's. That was delicious. Brad, I gotta ask you, are you a, you a chef or what? Brad blew us away. And racked up an impressive 34 points. Bastard, hate the game, not the player. Easy for you to say. I'm kind of shaking in my heels right now. Literally. Of course she's cooking in heels. Heels and hot rollers. You know, for tonight, I gotta make sure I'm a little glammed up. So we gotta put the rollers in to make sure that glam stays all night. Raise the roof. Hopefully Lisa has some tequila. She certainly has wine and crepes. The crepes today are for my dessert, which is a crepe cake. Not just a crepe cake, but a crepe cake with fresh strawberries and whipped cream served on a bed of creme anglaise. I'm a big fan of crepes. That's good because... I am a crepe queen. Lisa cracks her eggs and adds... A little bit of oil to make sure that they're not going to stick. Then Lisa adds sugar and flour. Delicious, gluteny flour. Oh, no. Oh, yes. We'll see if he's willing to take a couple bites along with his beer. Not to worry. Lisa's got the fake allergy thing under control with a non-gluten version for our old fish and chip. Everyone loves a blonde, even a blonde pancake. Crepes cooked, Lisa mixes strawberries, pineapple, and whipped cream and starts building her cake. Do you already talked about that? Not really. It's not cranky, my chain. Then how do you feel about Lisa's main? Maple glazed salmon, twice baked potato, and creamed spinach. What's wrong, Steve? I can't eat salmon. Why not? It's the fish thing. I, it's the taste. I hate it. Salmon's actually my favorite fish. Yeah, so there, Steve. I think that Steve is just a picky eater. Could be worse. I'm a bit of a salmon connoisseur. Lisa tosses her salmon and marinade into a plastic bag, and then she's going to... Seal it up and give it a little massage. Before moving on to the twice-baked potatoes. It's a baked potato. You scoop it out, you put a bit of something in it, and you put it back in. You'd think, but instead, Lisa cuts up the spuds. Because I want these puppies to cook fast. And boils them, which BTW is not baking. <laughs> this menu to me is about as useful as a one-legged man at an ass-kicking party. If you think Lisa's idea of a twice-baked potato is half-baked, tweet us, hashtag CDWMC. Watch out, folks. Stand back. Holy this is not good. Lisa adds bacon, onions, chopped garlic, and two different kinds of cheese to her potatoes. It's gonna be more cheese than potatoes. How posh. I picture her life to be fairly high-end. Not this dollar store diva. Take a look at this. Heavy and only one dollar. Ooh, ah. Look at the lovely kind of uh, modern shape to it, the nice curvature. Again, one dollar. But Lisa's breaking the bank when it comes to her appetizer, because she's serving a trio of prosciutto-wrapped grilled pineapple, cilantro shrimp, and watermelon feta salad. Phew, that's a lot. Maybe too much. You know, less is better. Careful, Kate. Better be nice. Lisa cuts up watermelon. Into one inch cubes. Then the pineapple. Now these guys are ready to be wrapped in prosciutto. Which will happen later, because it's time for Lisa to slip into something a little less comfortable. Dress code. Wedding guest attire. What, is she getting married? What the? OMG, WTF. Uh, does that mean she's going to be wearing a wedding dress? Yep. -er. Okay, I'm kind of going to try and recreate my wedding with regards to decor. I'm um, going to wear my same wedding jewelry, same shoes, same hair clips, same hairstyle. I've always been the, the drunk single cousin at the wedding. Shocker. It's not come dine with me, come wed with me. <laughs> Brad likes the theme. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to party like it's 1999. Oh, Anyway, they I, I can't do any more. <laughs> and the fun hasn't even begun. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will the blondes get bombed? Perhaps I should just go home now. Oh, but then Kelly would have nothing to complain about. It's the final night in our week-long foodie feud, and host Lisa is throwing a wedding-themed bash. So here comes the bride. It's 6 o'clock. My guests are about to arrive, and I am freaking out! No time for cold feet, because first guest Steve is here. Steve! Hi, Lisa. Hi. 
And a tad groomy. Yeah, I wished it was the end of the wedding, and then we had to walk upstairs and consummate it. Nope, you're gonna have to settle for the sofa. Come on in, Steve. Have a seat over in this corner over here. This one? Okay. That way I can look at your very handsome face. Liar. I believed her. Is anyone else coming? Mm, Let's I hope, hope not, Let's actually. Hope not. Yeah. You and me tonight. That'll do for me. All right, cheers to that. No such luck, because next wedding guest, Kelly, has arrived. Hi. Oh, oh my goodness, you look amazing. Hello. Way to suck up, Kel. I was hoping that I was going to be a sister wife. Cheers to that. If Lisa can get the bottle open. I don't know how to open a bottle of champagne because my husband always opens it for me. Better find a big, strong man. Steve. Or Steve. Would you please help me out for the evening? I'll try, darling. Yay! Do you think you could open up the bottles for me? Oh, nice. Wow. There you go. And here comes the bitter bridesmaid. Kate, come Hello, on in. How are you? Confused? <laughs> what the hell? Hey. Hi, everybody. Hey, you look great. Nice to see you. You love the fascinator. Yeah, Thank oh, you. Sorry, darling, you look lovely. And red hot. Kate thought that she was going to wear red to upstage the bride. Not a chance. She didn't manage it because uh, Lisa was gorgeous. And so excited to see Nerd Man. Hi, Lisa. Brad, come on in. Give me a hug. And say, I do, Brad. It was a bit odd that she's standing in her wedding dress. Not for Lisa. I actually celebrated my three-year anniversary this week. Yeah, two days ago. Seriously. Afraid so. My third wedding anniversary was not spent with my husband. <laughs> three years. Hello. Three years. And if you're going to celebrate your anniversary, do it with your husband or wife. Not with me. But there's enough wedding dresses for everyone. Oh my god. Oh my god. She she has three wedding dresses. That's crazy stuff. Dude, look at these things. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> extravagant. That's they, crazy. And all I'm thinking is there's two in the room and there's one on your bod. Good job counting. Maybe when you tie the knot, uh, you could ask Lisa to borrow one of these. I honestly don't think I could fill out one of Lisa's dresses. Well, then maybe accessories are more your thing. Blimey. Well, <laughs> this explains a lot. Lisa has about 100 different bracelets, 50 different pairs of earrings. And one massive mirror. I only have one big mirror like that in my house, and it's on the ceiling. All this, I want to be a housewife. I know you do, darling, and all I want is a wall full of beer. Let's get out of here. Before Lisa burns any more pineapple. Let's toss these. Let's go. Right into the garbage. I have more, so it's no big deal. Because after all, perfection is the name of the game. I have decorated this house. I have decorated the table. Yeah, about that. I am a little disappointed. Uh-oh. Oh. She spelled your name wrong. Gasp. K-E-L-L-I. Did she come to the party tonight? Perhaps I should just go home now. But then you'd miss the cilantro shrimp. All right, I'm going to give these shrimp a little bit of a zhuzh. I'm hoping that she doesn't put cilantro in mine. Oh, but then Kelly would have nothing to complain about. Meow. Chick drama. Which is better than shrimp drama. Scraping. We're scraping the shrimp. There's just a little bit of burnt stuff on here. Lisa plates her prosciutto-wrapped pineapple, cilantro shrimp, and stacks the watermelon feta salad. For better or worse, Lisa's app is ready to serve. Excuse my reach. I'm just going to reach over the table here. Kelly, I have to serve yours first, and I will tell you why afterwards. Thank Be back you. in one second, guys. I can already tell why. Because there's no cilantro for picky Kelly. I wouldn't call myself picky. Kate would. I'm cute. It doesn't mean I'm not evil. <laughs> Please enjoy. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, and some of the other stuff. I'm not a huge lover okay. of grilled pineapple. Mm -hmm. I am a good lover, you but are. I'm not a huge I'm sure lover you are. of that I'm sure you are. Or a shrimpy lover, for that matter. One and a half of my shrimps is pretty raw. I love what you did with the watermelon, like the feta on top of the watermelon, and I loved the basil there. It was great. It was colorful. And so labor-intensive. Because she cut the feta cheese, after all. I really enjoyed the shrimp. I love cilantro. And uh, shoot is one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. So you loved it? I wasn't about to go marry it. 
Yeah, because then you just end up bitter and divorced like Kelly. So why did you decide to get married then? Crazy in love, right? I went to see a psychic who um, read some things in both my past and present life. Or just crazy. A cuckoo. Nacho. Takes one to no one. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, save the last dance for Not Brad. It's the last night, and Lisa's throwing a wedding-themed party in hopes of winning the $1,000 prize. Why does that woman need to win? So she can buy another pair of shoes? Or wedding dress number four. After I chose and bought my dress, I did not stop trying on wedding dresses. <laughs> I'm one of those. Yeah, what do they call that? Crazy. <laughs> Crazy! Is that really your plan, though? To have, like, one for every year that you're married? Doesn't everyone? If I went on the road of Lisa and uh, wedding dresses every year of her anniversary, and my missus would have 28. Yeah, ain't gonna happen, because I ain't buying them. I have actually already tried on wedding dresses. Of course you have. Okay, I actually did not have a relationship at the time when I did it. Me and my girlfriend decided to pretend that we were brides because we both really like wedding dresses. OMG, that's so interesting. Not at all. I have no, no interest in anyone trying a wedding dress on. How about a diamond choker? Brad, what do you think of my new necklace? Stunning. I, I love it. In fact, I may have to ask you to uh, take it off because, you know, it's just... Use your words. It just suited her perfectly. I was sitting across the table from her, and boy, I mean, it was hot. Like, it was great. Now I know what turns on a geek. And Lisa knows about lip gloss, but what about salmon? So I'm going to grab this salmon, throw it under the broiler, and hope for the best. Let's go. Fingers crossed. Just really worried about overcooking the salmon. I'd be more worried about your boiled than nuked potatoes. How are they? Cheesy, cheesy, deliciousy. Sorry I asked. Oh my god, I did it. Salmon is cooked perfectly. Wow, I surprise even myself sometimes. If you want a little shock and awe in your next dinner party, head to wnetwork.com for all of Lisa's recipes. Lisa plates her not even once baked potatoes, creamed spinach, and salmon. Let's give these dishes a little wipey wipe. Because Lisa's main is ready for a little servy serve. Here you go. Mmm, looks good. It wasn't terribly aesthetically appealing. Which in layman's terms means... Looked like my potatoes were barfed out. Yum! So guys, I've brought for you to the table salmon, my fave, some maple glazed on top of some potatoes, and we got some creamy garlic spinach. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa! Uh-oh, uh, I'm scared. Da, da, da. I don't like salmon. Mm, I knew it. We all did. But you're beautiful, and <laughs> that really all And I love me. you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and don't ever hate me. And uh, keep wearing those dresses. Ow. Thank you very much. Steve loves Lisa. She is lovely. Kiss ass. This looked like smoked salmon, um, but it was tasty. Job well done. Spectacular, even. It wasn't spectacular, but it was good. I enjoyed the salmon. Salmon is one of my very favorites. What about the cream spinach? Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Much like the... Twice-baked potato. Lisa just mashed her potatoes and put a bunch of and called it twice-baked. Can't anyone be nice about them? And I'm also a huge lover of potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot going on in there. So in other words... I could have cemented walls together with those things. What did you think about the spinach? It was a little bitter for me. Kate would know, because Kate's bitter. At least she's not drunk and handing out table dances. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was insane! And not in a good way. And I thought I was bad. Show don't tell, Steve. Oh, oh! Oh! Oh, oh my god. And walking down an elevator. Oh, let's do it, yeah. You mean escalator. When in doubt, I always resort to... Oh! Oh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was worse than mine, to be fair. <laughs> Wait till you see Kate's. Well, that's oh. so... Oh! Oh! oh. That's you know not what? bad. She knows. <sighs> I dance the best, baby. Poor Kate, with her lipstick all about her eyelid.
Lisa's turn. Hands go up in the air. Hands go up in the air. And wave them like you just don't care. God love Lisa. Coming up on Come Dine With Me. It's money time. The winner is revealed, along with a little something else. It's the final night, and it's been a long time coming for Lisa. It took me about two years to come up with the courage to do this competition, because I know that everybody looks at me like a dumb blonde. No. She's no dumb blonde. You're absolutely right with your perception of your persona, but you are a great, great woman. Bless her. Bless her gut and subs. To not judging oh, yes. books by the cover. And to Lisa making her dessert at the very last minute. So, for my creme anglaise, I need four egg yolks. So, we gotta do some separating here. Let the chicken sperm drip through your fingers. Ew! Can't you just call them egg whites? Egg separated, Lisa whips up her creme anglaise and pulls it onto the plates. The truth shall be revealed at this very moment. Anticipation! Oh, look at that loveliness! Lisa plates her crepe cake and... This? is my dessert. Missing something? Oh. It's done? It's not done. I forgot my flowers. P.S. de resistance. A little tiny flower. Lisa's crepe cake is plated and ready to serve. Thank Brad. you very much. The presentation was great. Who's looking at the cake? Cut the boobs in. Oh, are they out? No, they're not out of nowhere. No, what the hell am I saying? Wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, that was amazing. Hopefully Lisa's dessert is too. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have for you a special treat. It's called a crepe cake served on a bed of creme anglaise. Steve, mm -hmm. sir. Mr. Wheat Belly. I've made you some gluten-free crepes. Enjoy. He won't. Dessert, you know, I don't care. I ain't a big dessert guy. Yes. No! I, and I know that. Oh! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That before. Gang but, with the spoon. There go. But, but, that was actually all right. Just all right? I don't get too orgasmic over dessert, so. At least you didn't end up with the Leaning Tower of Crepe. They found it a little bit difficult to bite into. And to put it another way... The whole thing fell over and it was a thousand layers of shite. I love the fact that you made it uh, multi-layer. I really can't say any more about that. It was perfect. I was totally blown away. So that makes one of you. I was not a huge fan. But you haven't heard the best part yet. The flowers are actually edible. Wow. I would really love it if Brad would eat that oh. big old daisy there. Dare ya. Are you brave enough? Oh, listen, babe. Babe? Who are you? Drunk Brad. <laughs> <laughs> listen, babe, you know, for you, I'll eat that flower. Do okay. it. Do it. Do, do it. it. Do it, Brad. Go, Brad. Go, Brad. Brad. Go, Brad. Go, Brad. Go, Brad. The true Brad comes out on the fifth you know night. What? Go figure. Right, it's one tasty flower. And even better. My now smells like daisies. But will Lisa come up smelling like roses? Go Brad! Go! I think I did a pretty dang good job as a hostess. But was it good enough? Hey guys, it's money time! Woo! I'm really excited. I can smell it. It's mine. The money's mine. Here it is. I was freaking psyched tonight. I feel like we're all uh, comrades in arms. If I come in last place, I'm going to rip this ass apart before I leave. In last place is... is Lisa! That would be me! Congratulations Lisa. to me! Wow, well done, Lisa. In tied. Oh, we have a tie here, uh -oh. guys. Uh-oh. Tied for second are Kelly and Steve. Oh, yeah. Steve! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, 
The winner is Brad. Well done. Yeah. Brad. Yeah. You did. <laughs> so in the end, the honeymoon's over for Lisa. I think you've been with Lisa for seven. This is the only wedding I've been to with that groom. <laughs> Sexy. Six. Lisa, I love you, but I score you a six. Great host, great lady, okay food. I'm going to give Lisa an eight. Right, I'm having a barbecue tomorrow. Can you come over and cook for me? Yeah. Listen, if you're going to supply the beer, I'll be there. I'm tired with Kelly. I'm absolutely delighted. And if I'd have given Brad a seven, I might have won. If anyone was going to win, I wanted it to be Brad. So I'm happy he won. I came in fourth, but I'm still the belle of the ball. Brad won the money. Did they not know anything to the money? Brad. Brad. Can I borrow $1,000? Come on, I did it. I'm, uh, I'm a... Booyah. Booyah. Booyah.